Hey everyone! While playing one of my favorite games currently, I noticed something very interesting. Check this roof texture out. It's a flat plane, but has apparent depth. These stones are the same. You might initially assume that this is a normal map, which mimics the lighting of a 3D surface. But in fact, part of the texture is occluding other parts of the texture. This is called parallax occlusion mapping. I love nodes in math, and I spent a fair bit of time trying to figure out how to map coordinates in 3D space onto a plane, based on the plane's position and rotation and the view angle of the camera. But unfortunately, I couldn't figure it all out. Doing some research on the subject, I came across Robin Janowski explaining a simple node setup which starts to recreate this effect. So let's set that up. Since we're dealing with materials, let's switch into rendered view and change the engine over to Eevee. Let's head over into the material tab and open up the shader editor in this bottom area. Hit Shift A to add a node to the shader editor. Find and add an image texture node. Any image with an alpha channel will work, preferably one that has the same height and width. It'll work out if it doesn't, just takes slightly more effort to set up. I'm just going to use a random texture I made at some point. I want to switch my cube to a plane real quick. In the 3D viewport, let's tab into edit mode, select all with A, hit X and delete all of our geometry. Still in edit mode, hit Shift A and add a plane. Now we can tab back into object mode. I don't want my leaves to be reflective for this example, so I'm going to turn up the roughness to 1. Connect the alpha channel up to the material alpha input. Since we're in Eevee, we need to scroll down in the material tab and find where it says blend mode. It should be under settings. Switch the blend mode from opaque to one of the alpha options. I used alpha clip. There's all these weird edges, I think because this object was originally a cube, I'm not sure. But if this ever happens to you, just adjust the clip threshold in the material settings. I think it should be 0.5 by default. And that looks good. Now we need to add some nodes to do some texture trickery. Add a texture coordinate node, and connect the generated output to the vector. Add a vector math node, switch it to subtract and put it here. Add a geometry input node, and we're going to subtract the incoming vector from our generated vector. The incoming vector points towards where the texture is being viewed from. Our texture already has a depth, but I have the camera positioned so we can't tell yet. We want some control over how far our texture sinks into the plane. So duplicate this math node, switch it to multiply, and drop it here. We can do the adjusting in this area, but it will be easier to just add a value node and connect it here. Now we can adjust our texture's depth with the value node. At zero, nothing happens. As we slide this value, our texture loops, which you may or may not want. If you don't want that to happen, switch the texture settings from repeat to clip. And now we can adjust the depth of our texture, but the real magic happens as you move the camera. It's not perfect, but it's a pretty good start to layering texture elements within 3D space using just one plane. And we can make use of this to do some pretty cool things. I'm going to select all these nodes and hit Ctrl H to hide any unused sockets. That way they take up less space. Let's also select these five nodes and hit Ctrl G to turn them into a node group. Hitting tab allows you to enter or exit the node group. We need a value input so we can control our texture's depth, so tab back in. Disconnect this value node. We could connect this group input directly to the vector input, but that'll create this three-slotted vector input on our node group. So let's find and add a node with a single value input, like a math node. Connect the group input to this math node and then we can delete it. Connect the value socket to the multiply node. And we don't need the value node anymore, so it's safe to delete. Tab out of the node group, and that's a depth control node group for our textures. So now let's mix two textures with different depths. Duplicate the node group and the texture node, connect the depth control. Add a mix RGB node, drop it here, and connect the colors up like this. Then mix the two textures by a factor of the second texture's alpha channel. And now we need to add the alpha channels together. Duplicate the mix node and drop it here. Switch the mix node to add, and connect the second texture's alpha to the bottom channel. Slide the factor to 1. Alpha channels have values from 0 to 1. At 0 the texture is black, and the material is transparent. At 1 the texture is white, and the material is opaque. So when we add the alpha channels, anything that was zero or transparent on both textures is still transparent, and anything that was opaque or one on either texture is now one or greater and opaque. However, anywhere that the two textures add together to be greater than one looks brighter than it should on the material. To fix this, check clamp on the add node. That'll lock the values between zero and one, so anything greater than one stays at one. 
these two textures kind of blend together, so I'm going to darken the lower one a bit with an HSV node. Just lower the value slightly. I should probably reverse the depth of these textures so that the top texture has a higher value and is visually lower. Now adjust the value, and there you have it, some very basic parallax occlusion mapping. One last thing that I like to do is add reroot nodes to my materials so that they're slightly more readable. Just look at how cool this is! The illusion kind of breaks down at certain angles, but I still think it's pretty amazing. Robin Janowski, who I mentioned earlier, also has a significantly more complicated setup that even more closely resembles the textures I showed from Genshin Impact. It's still not quite what I'm looking for, but it's getting very close. So if anyone has any ideas on how to set this up so it looks perfect, I'd love to hear it. It sounds like there's some talk within the Blender community on adding official support for parallax occlusion mapping using height maps, which would be amazing. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please like, subscribe, and leave us a comment on what you'd like to see us make. If you want to help the channel grow, share the video. If you'd like to help support the channel, we have a Patreon. Thanks again. Stay safe. I love you all. Goodbye. Mama!